can't know me, my name is Buzz Bruggeman. I run a wind, little Windows utility product company called ActiveWords. So I'm Buzz at ActiveWords.com. So I can clearly see I'm the oldest guy in the room. And being the oldest guy in the room, I'm in a different phase of my life. And what I realized, and this is the only nonprofit idea that I think we're going to use that, and I'm not sure about what comes back. Here's how the idea works. In 1985, my mother died. When my mother died, I was coming out of our house, and she had over a thousand books. And I looked at those thousand books, and I thought, what in the world can I do with those thousand books? So I went out to the community college in my hometown, International Falls, Minnesota, and I gave them all the books. And they took the books, and they put a book plate in each of those books, in loving memory of this young kid A couple years later, I walked back into the library, walked up, saw one of the books, opened it up, saw the book plate, thought of my mother, tears came back. When I moved to Seattle five years ago, I moved a bunch of books, 250, 300 books. And I got those books into where I live. And I looked at those books, and I thought, what am I going to do with those books? A third of them I want to keep. A third of them I'm never going to read. And a third of them, you know, I, I want to give away. So in effect, two-thirds of my library I'm, I'm willing to, I'm willing to get, make go away. So I theorized that what I need is $10 million. And I theorized that the person I need the $10 million from is the Gates Foundation. They have a library project. And I was hoping tonight that somebody here either worked at the Gates Foundation or knew somebody who worked at the Gates Foundation for the following idea. What I want to do is create the mother of all databases, wherein anybody in this room can scan in the ISBN number from their book into the database. The database would then match supply with demand. Demand presupposes 501c3. Uh, a nonprofit, a library, a prison, a school, somewhere in America that wants that book. So if I've got Malcolm Gladwell's Outliers, and I've got this book sitting on my shelf, and I've read it, and I call my idea Once Read Books, such that when that book has been read once, and I look at this book and I think, I've read it, I can afford it, I want to give it away to somebody to whom it will have meaning. And I'm very opposed to this idea of taking it down to the local library and handing them a box of books. Because what happens is the following summer, you're walking up the lawn, coming up the walkway, and you see your books there for sale for 50 cents. Now, the library really hasn't done anything other than the warehouse and hope they'll sell more than 50 cents a can or something. So there's been no meaningful reach distribution of the books. So the idea would be you put up your book. You know, a, a junior high school in New Mexico on an Indian reservation said, we want that book. You know, you get a mailing label, you get postage. That's where my $9 million goes from the mailing label and postage. The book goes in, when it gets to the junior college, maybe they print up a book plate. Maybe it just says, here's a gift. And that book gets recirculated into the, from the haves to the have-nots. Now, whose ox gets scored in this? Authors, Amazon, you know, people selling books. But you know, once they sell that book, I don't know that they necessarily have a right to sell that book a second and third and fourth time. And those of us who want to donate and distribute the stuff. And there's a whole generation of people, all your parents' age, my age, who in a funny odd way are looking to simplify their lives. And if you can convince them that simplifying their lives and that giving these books away to people who would want them and need them, in a funny way, simplifies your life at some future point in time when you're moving your books. <laughs> so I went to the Seattle Public Library and I said, how does a library business work? And the lovely lady from Seattle Public Library said to me, well, you know, we typically buy books at 40% off, off, off list. And I thought, that's great. So what if I gave you, what if I arranged you books, the books you want? You tell me the books that you want. I'll have my platform out there with the books that you might want. And the nice lady from the Seattle Public Library said, you know what, we've got this totally figured out. We appreciate your thought. We don't need it. And then the first week in September, they closed the library for a week <laughs> because they didn't have funds from which to operate. So I keep thinking about this over and over and over again, and I think, how in the world does this get done? How does it get built? How does it get redistributed? Because every time that book arrives somewhere, you know, somebody can give tax credit for a charitable donation. You know, and if you think through all the people who could benefit from the books that we've all bought along the way, that we're not going to read again. You know, we're not going to give away to our friends. And we're going to give it to somebody who truly wants it and needs it. So um, I actually went to a woman who ran a library in what I was told is the bleakest county in Washington. And she said, what do we have to do to, to, 
participate. So I know the demand is out there. I know the technology exists. I know that if, let's just look at the ROI of this transaction. If we had a used book price of, again, one of Gladwell's books, that's $9, and it cost us a dollar in postage to get that book to somebody, that's an $8, that's, we're saving $8. So $9 million times eight is $72 million. So from a pure ROI perspective, it, the thing works. You know, it's the kind of thing that I think, you know, one of my law school um, friend's wife was general counsel for Oprah. And I'm thinking, you know, how would Oprah buy into this? The idea of, you know, a, a, a black middle school in Alabama, you know, getting free books for free that, that had been read once. And the public spirited notion of Americans, I think, would buy into this totally. So that's the idea. Lots of comments, I guess. Let's go through that first $10 million. How are you going to read? I, I, you know, I, I picked out of thin air. I took a million bucks to say, build the business, evangelize the business, market the business, nine million bucks for post Okay, but where, where is the income? How are you going to keep There is no income. Going? There is no income. income. You're, 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 you're betting on the surety of Americans that once they buy into this idea, it's still got to be postage. Still got to pay postage. You got to pay postage. For the next still have to pay postage. Yeah, yeah. So, that would be definitely. Are you getting grants? Yeah. What, 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 yeah. what are you yeah. going to get? Yeah, one of the things I thought about going to is UPS, because the UPS was founded here, and they have a charitable foundation. So you think back on every UPS truck. This is not about timely delivery. This is about getting the book somewhere sooner or later. So because eventual when the book arrives, it's again. Excuse me? Eventual consistency. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think, I think altruism is one thing. I think that people being able to pat themselves on the back is another. So since there's going to be an account based here, I think that if you were to do something akin to Netflix envelopes where you send it to people and they got that prepaid envelope, I think you give them the sticker that says this was donated by such and such right in there so they can slap it in there. Right. I think mean, you also have some sort of gamification where there's a leaderboard where they can be like, I'm number, I'm number one here, look at how many books I've donated, because then you have people who get addicted to having like, I've been number one Daniel Steele donor. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so, so you have to put books up and then people have to say they want them. Right. So if, you, if you're putting books up, then all of a sudden this becomes a huge game where you're like, oh hey, I was at such and such and I found like, you know, something that was signed by this author that's obviously valuable, it's a hardcover first edition that everybody's going to want. So then you have this, like, all of a sudden, oh, hey, I really want to donate books that people really want. And then it becomes something yeah. where you've got these communities of people who just become book hunters that are doing these things. I, think what's also I mean, one of the things I want you to do is ask your parents. Ask your parents if they would engage in something like this. Because you guys, you guys are the guys that would help me build the site. You know, help me get this all built. You're not the target market for the people who donate the books. I don't My girlfriend's definitely the target market. She gives away books all the time. Yeah. And, and, who she get, the bill. and who does she get books to? Anybody. She tries to sell them on half.com and they just sit there for a long time. Yeah, no, I mean, I think, I think the, you know, we don't read books. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think most people here. What's that? Well, but, but I think an interesting idea. My girlfriend, if someone wanted that book and she can, and she couldn't sell it for more than ten dollars online, she would pay the postage. That, that's not a big deal. So this concept of like opting in to pay for postage, I, I think it's something you might want to explore, right? But not everyone has to pay. Well, all my beers remove all the beers, and I think that you're you're actually just backwards. I think she is the demographic. My parents are not. My parents right. have thousands of books. They have shit piled up. This things everywhere. They have no great problem. intentions of, of giving them out and doing things with them, but they just. Don't do it. They keep everything. Yeah, it's when they die. It's <laughs> and the problem is the one they die came to you, and now you're talking about books that are. Your parents should be better than me. Yeah, but I'm buzzing actively. Stop, Congress. Send me your ID. <laughs>